So in the second part of our class, we'll uh, take a look how to work with object classes and um, and we'll import several libraries. So MATLAB, PI and some other. And we'll create class code. So how can you create a class in Python? First of all, you can write down um, the class and then put the identifier. So our class has two attributes, attributes of a class and attributes of uh, one example, one type. So attributes of class is uh, the parameter that um, every of the item that we've created has. And um, the particular um, examples of the type is basically the specific features that uh, we will create. And then let's look at init method. Init method is more like a constructor. So basically um, it appears when we create um, some objects in a class. So for example, here when we create a cat, we have several attributes, name, gender, and uh, the color. So basically with the variable self, uh, we can say that uh, we have a specific name of the cat, nickname. So it is not uh, the name of the class, it is the name of a particular cat. So therefore, if we create a second cat, so first cat's name is um, Bushok and the second cat's name is Murka, typical Russian cat's names, um, then the self name will be different in two of these cats. So how can we um, determine different uh, parts of our object? First of all, we need to write a dot and then um, write a variable which we will we would want to see. So also let's take a look at access modifiers. Access modifiers um, are part of um, this um, encapsulation feature. So we can protect um, some parts of our class from some kind of invasions. So for example we have our private, it's accessible only within the class and we have um, inherent, it will be available for the next um, inherent classes. And so, for example, private will not be accessible by the inherents and by within outside of the class. And so, if we have private uh, public mode, then we have basically access. Uh, it will be accessible for pretty much everybody. Now, let's try to create uh, this cat named Murka once again, and uh, let's try to um, create this name again. So okay, now we have the name and now let's see how can we uh, define between private, public and protected. And so we can do this by underlining. If we have uh, the word underlined once, it's um, protected. Twice, it is private. Now let's try to demonstrate private attribute. So here we have an error because we cannot get um, an attribute of color outside of the class. So the same thing happens if we try to get the gender of a cat because it is a private attribute so we can't access it. Now let's look at um, inheritance and let's look at uh, the theoretical part which we've seen before. So here we have uh, class troll and uh, with init, init method and we have two parameters a and b. And we have two other methods, step one and step two. So methods are being um, done by the function called def. And so why do we have self here as well? Um, so we use self here because um, we can accept um, the example of a class. So therefore, when you create um, an inherent uh, object, you need to create um, this function called self pretty much in almost every case. So let's create troll, class troll, and uh, let's inherit um, e troll from this. So it's pretty easy to do. You just need to mention the parent of the class in the commas. So now let's expand the functionality of this class. Um, so we need to add uh, the function super with um, the method in it. So why do we use uh, super here? It means that um, it tells the other function, so go and look up init method. So basically it tells init to go and look for the parent uh, class. And therefore we get three attributes. 
two of these attributes go into the init method of the parent class. And basically we remember um, some of the attributes with the same function that we used in the parent um, account called self. So we basically write uh, self s equals c and then we add additional method. So this method will um, help us to multiply a, b and c. So therefore um, we didn't realize this method in the um, children's class but um, they're still available. So now let's take a look at another example if we don't um, accept the object of the argument into the class. So we can get um, the access to this method through the class. So for example we can make a square out of 5 plus 3 and um, now it actually works. But now is it possible to do the same um, the same function but through an object. So let's um, create an object um, a and uh, use the function get squares. So as the result we also get an error and in order to avoid such errors so we need to um, program in a way that the object will not accept um, the object of a class. So here we use uh, the static method. So the static is different because you don't need to transfer the class information. And in Python it's quite easy. You need to write add static method. So we tell our class that this method doesn't need an object. So now let's focus on more difficult task. So let's take the same function but uh, write it in the objected oriented programming.